Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be all about the different types of pet rats that are out there. I see a lot of questions about people asking what breed of rat do they have or what breed of rat is best to get. And when it comes to domesticated rats and laboratory rats, they're all descended from the Norway rat. So if you want to get technical, the breed of rat that you do have is a Norway rat. No one really calls them Norway rats anymore when they're speaking about domesticated rats. They are just called pet rats or fancy rats. Some people also get confused about this and they think that a fancy rat is a different type of rat than a pet rat or even just the regular rats that are outside, which is true. But when it comes to the term fancy rat, it's kind of something that the pet stores made up to make them more attractive to buyers coming in and out of the stores. And pet shops also coined the terms small rat, medium rat, and jumbo rat. So when you go to the pet store and you buy a rat and it says on the cage there that it's a jumbo rat, it doesn't mean that it's different than any other pet rat, it's just the size. A lot of times pet stores will advertise the size because most of the time people are coming in there to buy the rats as a feeder. So if you're into reptiles, especially snakes, then you probably realize that the sizing for rats is usually just a guideline for what you need to feed your reptile. But when it comes to owning them, it doesn't mean that if you buy a small rat they're going to stay small. It just means that they're a young rat, most likely a baby. And getting a jumbo rat doesn't mean that you're going to end up with this huge massive rat. It just probably means that they're selling large adult males in their jumbo tanks. So now going back to the different type of rat breeds, as I said before, there isn't really different rat breeds when it comes to domesticated rats. They are all from one strain, the Norway rat. However, there are different varieties when it comes to coat, ear placement, and coloring, and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and go over a few of them, probably the most popular ones. This would be a really long video if I went over every single different variety of rat out there, but I'm going to go over the most popular ones and some of the ones that are becoming more popular now. The different varieties can get pretty complicated, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of start small and then work our way up throughout the video. So our first up is going to be body type and the first two have to deal with ear placement. So the first one is a top eared or standard eared rat and this is what Mei Mei and Amber are and they're probably the most common rats that you'll see around. Next up is the Dumboed ear and all my other rats are Dumbos. The ear placement is just on the side of their head and they can end up being rather large in size. And next up is the Manx or the tailless rat. This is a natural mutation and they have no problems with balance or anything like that. And I think they're super cute, but they have no tail and that's how they're born. And the next up is the dwarf, which actually is becoming pretty popular. They um, look just like a regular rat except for their tiny. And as you can see here in the photos, they're showing you an example of two adult rats. One's a dwarf and one is a regular rat. So second we have eye types and unlike body types, eye types only come with certain colors like this is Mila, she's a black eyed rat and she is also a blue rat. You can't get a red eyed rat that comes in a blue color. So depending on the eye color is usually kind of depending on the coat color also. So here is a pink eyed rat. This is one of the foster babies I had. He was a pink eyed white, also known as an albino. And then this is one of the other foster babies and she was ruby eyed. It's kind of hard to tell when they're ruby eyed unless they're in the light, but um, ruby eye only comes with certain colors as well. And then next up is the odd eye. It's usually one black eye or one ruby eye or one red eye and one ruby eye. And third we have coat type and this is when it can get pretty complicated but the standard coat is just a smooth coat. I tried to put some pictures of in here where you can see where it's just a smooth coat and um, it's pretty shiny. This is what your uh, most popular rat will end up being. And then next up is the Rex. They're getting pretty popular too. Um, also known as a poor Rex depending on the curls or a velveteen. Like this is Mei Mei here. When she was a baby she definitely looked like a Rex rat but now she kind of doesn't really look like that anymore now that she's older but as an adult they should look like this guy here with um, curls and kind of waves in his hair and as another picture here this is Mila when her coat has kind of grown out and straightened out a little bit but um, they also come in different colors 
And the next up is a double rex, and I love these guys because they all end up being different. It just depends on genes. Some have patches of hair throughout their life, some lose it and grow it back, and then they have all different kinds of patterns like this. Or some end up looking almost hairless and then growing it back. But um, they also come in all different kinds of colors. And as you can see, this little guy here, he almost looks like he's hairless, but his hair is pretty short compared to a regular Rex. And then the next up is the hairless rat, and these are really popular now. I'm really glad because they were getting a lot of hate years and years ago, but they're a lot po more popular now. And they also have great personalities, and as you can see here, they have both the ear type, both top ear and dumbo ear. Okay, next up we're going to do markings, and again, this also can get pretty complicated. I'm just going to go over some of the basics. I'm definitely missing some out, but the first one is the most popular, and that is a Berkshire. It's just a any colored rat with a white belly and usually white paws. And um, Amber and May May are both Berkshires, and so is Mila. And then next up is a self rat and that just means that whatever color the rat is it's going to be fully that color no white spots anywhere not even on the belly another common rat is the hooded rat and these guys come in all different colors and their hood stripe can be all different shapes and sizes but normally they are one color from tip of their nose all the way down to the base of their tail and then they have white sides And then we have the mast rat. This is also a variety that comes in many different colors, but they're usually white, and then whatever color they are, it'll be around the eye area, like this one here. Next up is the Irish rat. So this just means that they will have white paws and then a little tiny white spot in the center or the lower part of their belly. And then there is the English Irish, which is white paws and then a diamond shape on their chest. And this is what my foster mama Tui was. And this is an example here. It's just like a perfect diamond right at the center of their chest. And then there's the patched rat. These guys look really different depending on the rat. And they also come in different colors. Iona is a patched rat and so is her sister. And like I said, it just really depends sometimes they have patches all over. And then there is the variegated. These guys look really cool and um, they usually have a hood and a blaze like this guy here on the forehead and then um, spots throughout all the way down to the base of the tail. And lastly we have the down under. These guys aren't really that common because they originated in Australia, hence the name, but they are slowly being introduced to North America and the UK, and everybody seems to know about them because they look so unique. Okay, now we're moving on to colors, and there are tons and tons of different rat colors, but I'm just going to go over the basics. And Mei Mei and Mishka are both Agouti. These are my favorite rats, and they have all different kind of coloring and silvering and ticking in their coat. I just think they look really nice and they just look like a wild rat. And then there's just the basic black rat. Iona is a black rat and so are these foster babies that I'm about to show. Um, black rats kind of range from like more of like a chocolate color up to a jet black. Next is the white rat, and Ingrid here is a black-eyed white, and then the most common rat probably out there for laboratories and even pet stores and feeder bins is the pink-eyed white, also known as the albino. And here's Amber. She is technically a silver fawn, but most of the people just refer to it as a fawn. And that's not to get mixed up with the beige color because silver fawns have red eyes and beige are more of like a cream color and they have ruby eyes or black eyes.
And then next up is blue. Blue comes in all different colors. This is Mila and she is an American blue, but there is a range of all different kinds of blues that are out there. Okay, that's it for all of my descriptions. And when it comes to finding the rat that's right for you, it doesn't really matter when it comes down to coat color or ear type. There's not one that's supposed to be nicer than the other. There has been kind of a rivalry going on between Dumbos and standard ears and who's nicer and who's more aggressive. But in the end, they're all the same. It just depends on genetics and how you're handling them and just how you're, they're basically being taken care of. So when you're looking for a rat, I would definitely go for personality first and health over the color and coat type, even though it can be kind of hard since there are different varieties out there that appeal to different people. And like I said, I missed out a ton of different markings and coat types, and I'm going to go ahead and post the Rat Fancier organization breed standards in the description, and I'm also going to be posting all of the websites that I got the photos from. I tried using my own photos when I could, but I wanted to show you guys the actual descriptions in the photo. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. And if you want me to identify the rat that you have, go ahead and send me a Facebook message and you can send me a photo so I'll be able to tell you what kind of rat you have. So thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you guys and I'll see you in my next video. And here's some quick footage of Amber actually being calm. She is one of my most hyper rats, and she's usually never calm, but every now and then after they've been free roaming for a while, she'll come and sit on my lap and just get stroked.